everyone, I'm Noodles. Today we're going to uh, play and code 10 Second Ninja. 10 Second Ninja is a fast paced platformer where you have to destroy Nazi robots in under 10 seconds, hence why it's called 10 Second Ninja. The faster you do it, the better your score will be. A little bit about this game, it was uh, developed by Four Circle Interactive, which is a small indie studio of four developers. I think it's two programmers, a um, sound designer, and an artist. They actually ended up creating a sequel, because this one did pretty well, has uh, good reviews, and that one's just called 10 Second Ninja X. It looks a lot prettier than this one. I wish I had that one, because it looks like it plays better, and it just looks fantastic compared to this one. Anyway, let's jump in and get a feel for what this game is all about, and then we can go on to code one of its features. Let's skip this. All right, so up arrows, there's a double jump, uh, sword, shurikens, and retry. So let's just go at it. I've played a little bit of it, so we'll see if I can get three star again. Oop. So I'm gonna retry. I really want that three star. That's probably why so many people like this game. Because you could really challenge yourself to do better. Uh, see, like, that's, it's getting closer and closer. I wonder if it's easier with the uh, gamepad. It feels like it's one of those games that it would be a lot easier with the gamepad. Something like uh, Super Meat Boy or games of that style. And you can see I got a one star there. I need under two seconds. To get that three star, which I'm really aiming for. I really don't think. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Three stars. So you saw that there was like a time that I had to beat. If I did less than that time, I would get three stars. If it was less than the two star time, I would get the two star and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's just go on to the next level. And I'm bad at video games. So. This game is by no means ugly, but if you check out their second game, it looks very, very good. The effects are much more polished. Oh, there we go. Let's just move on to the next level. Oh man, I'm bad. Let's uh, just move on to the next level. I want to get to the first boss before we go into the coding section. It's not so bad. Now let's move on. Oops. Oh, <laughs> that was bad. I'm surprised I actually, uh, actually got that. But let's move on. I think the next level should be the boss. Nope, after this level, I think. Oh, that was really bad. Let's just move on. I guess I didn't know what I was talking about. Whoa, that was weird. So there are like a couple bugs. Um, I think if you're moving when you die, then it continues to move when you retry. So let's just move on. So pretty simple. I have no shurikens, that explains that. It wasn't immediately obvious, so that's a, I think a game design flaw, is that it wasn't immediately obvious to me that my, I didn't have any of those shurikens. But anyway, we finished the first groups of levels, so let's get on to actually coding one of the features. All right, so we played the game, now let's jump into Unity and try to recreate one of the game's features. The feature we're going to recreate is the three star rating based on how fast you complete the level. This isn't too difficult to make, but it can be used in a ton of different situations, not just like this mobile platforming type game. It can be used in objective based games. Like if you look at Metal Gear, they give you a star, not really a star rating, but they give you a grade. The same thing can be applied. You can just decide what parameters you're gonna do instead of time, and you can modify the code to allow that. 
So let's just jump in and show you how I put everything together, some of the groundwork of getting this together. This is a relatively small and easy project, so let's just jump in. You see here only a couple of game objects. We have the player, which is just a box collider and a rigid 2D body, which is kinematic, so that it doesn't fall, it doesn't apply gravity. That's just to give me a little bit more responsive movement when I press left and right. We have the ground, we have a goal trigger, which is just a trigger with the timer script on it and our goal script, which we're gonna get into. Then we have a game manager, which has the game manager script. And all this one's doing is saving scores that we get. So let's just play and we could see what we got. So I'll press left and right, and that moves the player. I mean, we're not, this isn't really the main point of the game, but you see, when I went through, I got a two star rating. So let's say if I wait no time at all, you see right here, I got a three star rating for that one. So if we wait, let's say more than 10 seconds, so this is gonna count down, count down, you know, it's gonna eventually set the score as nothing, or it should. We failed, so we'd have to retry in that case. And then if you do it before 10 seconds, but less than whatever the one star rating or two star rating is, you'll end up getting a one star. And let's just jump into the code. The first thing is the player, nothing special here. This just has a speed and in the update, I'm checking for the key that I want. Granted, I'm not using the input manager. This is not the focus of the code, but I just want you guys to have an idea of what I'm doing. So there's like nothing hidden away from you. So we check for the code and move the, the player's position. Now let's go on to the actual meat of it. These three scripts are the ones that are actually doing the work. So we have the timer. You see we have an amount of time. That's how long the level's gonna last. It seemed fitting to do 10 seconds. So I just did 10 for the amount of time. Then I have a couple of private variables. Uh, the first is a bool called is counting, and that's just to determine whether the counter is counting or not counting. And this would be useful if we want to pause the timer for some reason. At the end of the round or at the end of the level, we could pause the time so it doesn't continue to count. And then the next private is the float for time left, which is the internal time. Instead of modifying this public variable for amount of time, we're gonna modify this private variable, which is time left. So you can see in our start function, which is triggered anytime the game object is spawned, we initialize time left to the amount of time. So that way at the beginning, before we could like edit this and change it to five seconds, then time left is equal to five. Then our update function, which is called every tick, we just see if we're counting and if the time left is greater than zero, and if those conditions are met, then we just subtract the time it took for that update to occur. So time.delta time, really important property to understand. It's a time between update calls. So if we just subtract that from our time left, that will give us a time. So if it takes one second to call update again, then delta time is one second. We subtract that to get the time left. Then I just have a basic accessor called get time left, which returns the amount of time left. Lastly, I have a mutator, which is to set is counting, and we give it a value, a bool value, and we set it to that. So we use this to freeze the timer. So we do set is counting to true to continue the counter or false if we want to pause it. Now let's move on to the goal. And you can see we have a public reference to our game manager class, which we're going to go into next, but let's just ignore that for now. Next, we have a public timer, which is the class we just talked about. Each goal has a timer attached to it. Now we have goal times, which is how long it takes to actually complete for a certain star rating. In our case, we have three stars. So the first star we omit because if you have zero time left or less, then you end up with retry and anything from zero to whatever our two star time is, is going to give us a one star. I hope that made sense. <laughs> but anyway, we can define our two star and three star time. Our two star time is if you beat it in six seconds, but our three star time is if you beat it in three seconds. So the faster you beat it, the more stars you get. Next, I just created a public enum called rating, which has our different states called failed, one star, two star, and three star, just to make it a little bit easier to read. In our start, we just initialize the timer to get the timer component that's on our game object, which is on our goal game object. So now we have a timer and we could start counting down and referencing that using the accessor from the timer script. Now we have a, another function. This one's a private function called calculate score, and, and that returns a rating. 
So we could use this to actually get the rating based on the time left that we have. To make it easier us for design, we spent some time thinking about how we're gonna actually implement it in the code. Instead of saying that we want there to be nine seconds left to get a three-star rating, we wanna say that it takes three seconds in order to beat it. So if you beat it in less than three seconds, then you're good. So the way we get that time is by referencing the initial amount of time from the timer and subtracting our goal time. If the time left is greater than or equal to that, then we know that we beat that score. So you can see here, we just do the same thing and we return rating three star. If it's better than a three star time, a two star if it's better than two star time, and a one star if it's worse than a two star time, but better than zero. And lastly, we just return failed if none of those are met. If you don't beat it in the allotted time, then it returns failed. Then, of course, our goal has a trigger. That's part of the game object. We just set that to check if the game object hit is a player using the tag system in Unity. If it is a player, then we do this. The first thing we want to do is set is stop the counter from counting. So we just set that to false. Then we calculate our score using the calculate score function and the time that was left on the timer after we paused it. And that will return a rating into our score variable. Next, we go into the game manager. We get its instance because it's a singleton, which we'll get into. Save the score and send the score to it, which was our rating. So one star, two star, three star failed. And we save that score. What is the game manager? What's it doing? It seems like it's doing so much but it's really not. So let's just jump into it real quick. So we can see right off the bat, we have a public list of goal ratings and that's our scores. That's just a list that's gonna hold all of our scores throughout the entire playthrough or whatever. This manager class isn't important. The way you're going to be implementing it might be different. It might be doing different things. Instead of just saving the scores, maybe you're actually saving it to a file. I'm just saving it to a list. But anyway, now we have our singleton pattern. I don't really want to get into this, but basically it just means that only one instance of this class can be alive at once. That way we know whenever we mention the game manager instance, we're getting the same one for every object we get it from. Anyway, now if we go under that, we have our public function called save scores, which we pass in a goal rating. And all we do is we add that score to our list. And that's all it is. Super easy. Very simple, and that's how we get our three star rating. So when we play, if we wait, we got a three star. Then if we wait for more than three seconds, one, two, three, we'll get a two star. And if we wait less than six seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll get a one star. And if we wait 10 seconds, then the time's up and we get a failed. So yeah, this could be used in a lot of different games and I hope you guys are excited to imagine how you could implement this into your own future games or current games even. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be posting more videos. So if you enjoyed this, click the like button, hit that subscribe and notify button if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. And yeah, until next time, I'll see ya.